Twitter is a fucking mess. If you look at this Elon Musk situation, he's asked now to go behind the numbers and look at uh, the, the number of fake accounts and spam and robots and all that other bullshit um, that are doing this stuff. And the number was supposed to be less than 5%. Um, they have started the audit and it's real goddamn bad. So they said just President Biden alone, 70% uh, of his followers are fake. Um, this wasn't Fox News or any, anything else. This was just, that was Bloomberg who reported that. Um, they also, 70% of, of Biden's followers are bots and are fake. Um, that, that came out yesterday, but they also said more than half of Elon Musk of his followers are fake as well. And I think he wants to get to the bottom of that for two reasons. One, you got to figure out how to, to clean up the platform and make this a business model that is successful and how to monetize this shit, which Twitter has not been able to do. Two, um, by doing so, if they come out and, and say, all right, we were way off in this number and it's 50%. 60%. There was even a guy, uh, uh, an engineer for, I think he used to work for Facebook. His number was as high as 80% of, of the, the followers and, and people on Twitter are bots. I don't know if that's true. Um, but if it is, Elon's going to be able to go back in, renegotiate this deal, and probably get that company for half price right now. Maybe. Maybe. I don't even know. Can he get it, though, still? Like, can they go back? I don't think they're going to have a choice. And I think... It's, it's super interesting with this one because I don't know why he did it in the first place. Like, did he know going in that half of all Twitter was fake and this was a, just a huge fucking pull your pants down moment for Twitter to be okay, like... Okay, so the company who did this audit's called Spark Toro. Okay. Uh, and I'm making sure that's who everyone is referencing here. It's an audit research agency. I have their website up right now uh, for you to check out. But uh, this, is, this is the company who did that audit. Okay. Yeah. And, and were they hired... By Musk's team, or the or Twitter voluntarily did that. I don't know. I don't know who asked them to do this audit. That's what I haven't discovered yet. But all the articles are quoting that this was the company who did the audit. Okay. Yeah. Um, but either way, it's it's a it's a fascinating uh, thing that's going on there because if 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 half of these users are fake on this platform, who the fuck have we been talking to for years and years and years? That's what I keep thinking about. Um, sometimes you find yourself in arguments with people before you even click on their, their uh, picture and you're like, all right, who the fuck is this? Um, when you're like three deep in a conversation, three tweets deep in a conversation, you're like, who the fuck is this? And then you look at their account that started in April of 2022 and you're like, all right, well, that just started a month ago. They have one follower and then they're following like 6,000 other people and you're like, man, are you just creating accounts just to argue with me and just to create discord in America? Probably. Um, but if this audit, if this audit reveals all of that in there, I think it's going to be a real goddamn eye opener, uh, not just for Twitter, but for every social media platform, because Facebook, that guy that I was talking about, who was the, the former engineer over at Facebook, he said, if they did an audit on Facebook of how many of these users were fake, it would alter your mind. And I was like, shit, well, then you start thinking about Instagram and everything else. Um, I, you kind of get why people are going to TikTok. TikTok isn't really about the followers. Like, I don't know any of these people on TikTok. However, you just watch the videos, and then you get caught in a loop of, like, cool, endless shit that's on a great algorithm, and you're like, I don't really care. It's entertainment. It's almost like watching that cable channel of the chive at a bar. Um, I don't know the name of it. Do you know the name of that, Delco? Chive TV. Is, it, no, is that what it's called? Atmosphere. Oh, Atmosphere. That's Did it. they change it? It's just the company that runs I thought that it. Was, yeah, I thought that was just their, like, umbrella company. Either way, when, when that's on at a bar, you can sit your kid in front of that for two hours, and then you can drink, watch whatever game you want, and they can watch Chive TV all day long. That's what TikTok reminds me of, where I'm not really there for the users. I really don't care about the people themselves. Um, I care about this algorithm that is just feeding me endless content of shit that I enjoy. Um, whereas Twitter, you're going to have to really figure this the fuck out. And I'm with you, Giorgio. I think you've got to lock down some of these stars to where you're exclusive to this and then start doing exclusive deals um, with some of these companies for highlights and all that other shit. Because right now, you know, every UFC fight, you kind of don't really have to pay for it. Like 10 seconds after it's over, somebody's going to post the knockout on yeah, there. Yeah, someone who was there and then it'll be pulled within, you know, an hour or so. Yeah. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. 